Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, it's International Day of the Girl Child, Girl's Vision for the Future. The 2024 International Day of the Girl Child theme is Girl's Vision for the Future, and it highlights the urgency of addressing global crisis and empowering girls. Girls face challenges related to climate change, conflict, poverty, and setbacks in human rights, but they remain hopeful and actively work towards a, t well, a world where they are respected and empowered. To fully realize their potential, girls need support, resources, and opportunities. When girls lead, the positive effects are felt across families, communities, and economies. Now, joining us to have a conversation on the International Day of the Girl Child is Betty Abba. She's a women and children's rights activist and also the founder of Sea Hope in Nigeria. Good morning, Ma. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Happy International Day of the Girl Child to you. All right. So today, yeah, yes. Okay. So today, obviously, is a day that it is celebrated across the world for girls, for women, because obviously you were a girl before you now, you know, blossom to a woman. But I want to, I want to understand what is, what is so special about today and why is it important that girls have to be celebrated this way? Thank you very much. Um, October 11 every year is celebrated as the International Day of the Girl. And uh, I think that is a very um, wonderful gesture by the United Nations in light of the challenges that girls face, not just in Nigeria, not just in Africa, but in every part of the world. Uh, women, girls are marginalized. The female folk generally are marginalized. Mm. So um, it's a wonderful expression of support for the women folk, for, the, for females all over the world to highlight the challenges that they face and to uh, find ways uh, where, whereby they can be empowered and also uh, to directly address those challenges. So it's actually quite um, impressive and it's a great thing that we always look forward to every single year. Mm -hmm. And it's also heartwarming to know that as the issues are spotlighted, they are addressed, and we're seeing some uh, changes. It may not be significant, but at least there are changes. Mm -hmm. And like Tim Amanda, the novelist who say, every problem must be named because if they are not named, then you, you, you won't be able to address and tackle those uh, challenges. And so uh, we have issues of marginalization in terms of education. Uh, we ha you have early issues of early child marriage. You have issues of um, female genital mutilation, widowhood rights, and all kinds of things that are targeted at women folk, at girls and women folk. And when uh, days like this are set aside, those issues are adequately addressed. And, and we see that with time, uh, they are solved. So girls generally are marginalized. I, I run an NGO uh, working with children in vulnerable communities and then with major focus on girls. Because when you talk about marginalization, even in poor communities are struggling with poverty, struggling with relevance, dealing with all kinds of uh, being underserved and all of that. Even girls in those communities have their own levels of marginalization by their own families, by the immediate society. So the, a girl child in Africa, in every part of the world, is wired, is born, and, and then faced against challenges. And it's also incredibly sad because these same girls, these same women, are wired naturally with potentials that can change the world around them. Women are born with very transformative elements. Women are empathic. They have this empathy. They are wired to be caregivers. And when they are empowered, you can imagine that they empower every single person around them. But then the forces of culture, the forces of societal sentiment and norms are targeted to suppress the women and suppress these inborn potentials. And this does not go well for a, a society. When you have humans, when you have people, when you have demographies, that are naturally wired to transform the society, and then the society itself suppresses, oppress, and dims the light of those people. So it's like self-harming. And mm. so uh, it's really, really good that we have a day like this. Mm. And um, for Nigeria in particular, Nigeria has the highest number of birth of school children in the world consistently for several years now, and with girls being in the majority. 
So when a girl, a day like this is set, um, um, a, a day like this is created, it addresses those issues. But sadly, we don't have, from the body language of the government, there are no major uh, policy initiatives sincere initiative that may be on paper to address these issues mm -hmm. and so um, this kind of they calls for attention calls for review calls for personal uh, 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 self-examination on what can be done and how our society can be better when they are conscious effort to empower girls and and then women mm -hmm. particularly i mean decisively empower and change the the the, uh, the, the current norms that suppresses them all right beautiful um i know i know that women face a lot of challenges girls in particular face a lot of challenges we have like um gender-based violence we have um gender-based uh, discrimination um like you've said female genital mutilation um some of them are not in schools there are so many things and of course this day is to highlight all of those challenges and try as much as possible um to find things that could help you know the girl child so now my question is how do you think the girl child can be supported because you've said that the government hasn't really done so much yet how do you think girls can be supported whereby it's not even just for their health their mental well-being the opportunities the potentials that they have to be able to thrive and flourish in this world what can the government and even meaningful nigerians do to support girls right now Okay, let's take it uh, at least. Let's touch on maybe one or two issues. Right. Uh, specifically, when you talk about girl education, um, like I, I mentioned earlier, we, we have the number of out of school, the highest number of out of school children in Nigeria. We have the highest number of out of school girls in Nigeria, and uh, this is um, embarrassing because this has gone on for so long. So, I would imagine that the government uh, would have made a decisive policy to address. The issue of girl education in Nigeria, out of out of school girls, uh, you have so many girls are giving out in marriage, and then it creates multi-dimensional poverty, creates generational poverty. Because when you are not empowered as a woman, you give birth to children, you are not educated, you give birth to children. There's a high, uh, um, it's like I mean, there's a high probability that you are not going to push those children to go to school, and then the cycle of poverty continues. And oh, with all kinds of um, marginalization, lost opportunities. So uh, I would uh, imagine that uh, government to push the policy of girl education. In in uh, back in the days, when should people don't send their children to school? The government comes to arrest them. In the north, it happened, and that's why you have people like Atiku and so many other prominent northerners that are there up there today because there was a, a specific policy of punishing parents, punitive measures for parents who don't send their children to school. And I would imagine that that would have done something like that in terms, uh, in light of the international embarrassment, I will have the highest number of out of school girls consistently. Uh, I've not seen the parents being dragged to court. I've not seen the parents being sentenced for sending uh, their 12 year old daughter to, um, to, 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 to uh, a husband's house. Mm. I've not seen, and we should be able to do that. We've seen girls in the north especially we've seen in kano we've seen in plato said killing their husband because they said they wanted to go to school teenagers and i would have imagined that government should have reacted decisively to that then you have issues of uh, rape the gender-based yeah. violence especially sexual violence against children against young people i run a shelter a woman's shelter in lagos and we set we set that shelter up specifically in the uh, during the covid 19 period because there was a spike in um domestic violence but over time, much of the people we've seen coming into the shelter are teenagers who are, are being raped by their stepfathers, being raped by their uh, madam's husbands, by their neighbors, and all kinds of things. And I will not see the government pursuing this. As NGOs, we can only respond by reporting. We can respond by trying to provide a support system for the survivors. But we can. We don't have. And we are not a law enforcement agency. We cannot jail the people. We are not a judiciary. But it's up to the law enforcement agencies, the judiciary, and all, all the arms of government that are authorized to deal with these people. And we don't see much of that happening. Lagos uh, state government is trying in terms of the. A domestic and sexual violence uh, agency who partner with which partners with our shelter but across the country there's a high rate of um, rape of uh, young girls teenagers especially i would have loved to see a lot of punishment to serve as deterrence to these uh, culprits mm. 
I will not see much of that. And there are all kinds of um, uh, uh, cultural norms that hamper the growth of uh, girls. But majorly what we see, the trend we see most of, of these days is girls being out of school and then uh, sexual violence. And these are issues that should be tackled decisively because they impede on the progress of these young people. When a girl is raped and then she becomes pregnant, for most of the time, that's the end of her education. And um, it's not a good development at all. So government should have been decisive to ensure that these are prevented. Mm. So um, I know the government definitely has a role to play, like you've said, decisive um, policies, decisive measures to ensure that women are safe or girls are safe and then all of their potentials can be harnessed. But even as a woman, as women in Nigeria, how do you think we can call for social change? Because, I mean, it begins with us. We are the females. We are the ones that understand ourselves better. We are the ones who are going to bear children. Some of them would be girls. And as a mother, you definitely want the best for your child. So how do you think we can bring about social change where everybody, even the other gender, can understand us better and ensure our own safety as well? Thank you very much. I think women in Nigeria are trying against um, all of the odds. Mm. Um, you see, most of the time, the protests that have been organized in the country against gender-based violence, against rape, against uh, all kinds of social vices. Most of the time, they are coordinated by women. So I think women have really responded well in calling for social change, in mobilizing all the actors in the sector, in sensitizing the general public. But we can do much more. Uh, because as long as the issues are still there, we just have to keep talking, we just have to keep mobilizing, we just have to keep holding the actors, the uh, the governmental actors to account. Because it's not as if we're in a banana republic. There are all kinds of legislations to address, to respond to these issues. We have the Violence Against the Persons um, Prevention Act, the VAP Act of 2015, under Jonathan's government, which spells out all the the sentences, all the punishment for all of these uh, violations of human rights, sexual violation, uh, traditional norms, cultural, uh, harmful cultural practices and all of that. But most of the time, they are not enforced. And I even heard recently that some characters in the National Assembly are trying to repeal that act that provides for the prevention of women and girls in the country, the much needed protection of women and girls in the country. So I think that women can keep talking, but also, the people that are affected, the victims, the survivors, they also have to um, mean well for themselves. They also have to respond to the protection, to the advocacies that we provide. I run a shelter, and then sometimes you see someone coming into the shelter, we provide counseling, we provide all kinds of rehabilitation and all of that. And then the person goes back to their abusers. So mm -hmm. it doesn't make any sense. You had a case of, of what happened in a Bible the other time, uh, the woman who was being beaten by her lawyer husband and the neighbors were recording her and they said this has gone on for like 13 years this woman this man constantly abuses the wife he brings oh, her right. out in the open and strips naked and then beats her you know it caused outrage all over the country yeah uh, they uh, recently demised of her pyron government actually led a protest she led a protest in the state against the, because of this uh, against domestic violence using this as a peg but you know what happened? You, uh, we all saw the letter that the wife wrote addressed to the advocates, the government, and everybody, the lawyers, and said they should leave her husband alone. Mm. She wants to go back to her home. She likes her children. Yeah. That they should, because at that point, the husband had been arrested. Mm. But this is someone that is fighting those that were trying to fight on her behalf. So it doesn't make any sense. So right. people that are affected should also stand up and have a mind of their own and then get out of the abuse, get out of the situation, right, and not yeah. relapse back and yeah. bond with the abusers. Thank you so much for that. All right, I know that, you, of course, you're a women's and children's rights activist, and so you're passionate about this, but I have just one more final question. If you could make a change for girls around the world, what would that be? Okay, 
I, I would say that every single girl should be educated because right. when you are educated, you are an asset not just to your family, not just to your neighborhood, not just even to your community, but to the society and even to the world. Mm -hmm. I, I would imagine that if I were not educated, if I didn't have the kind of education I have, I would have been somewhere in Ben, maybe going to farm this morning with eight children <laughs> tagging along me and I mean, continuing intergenerational poverty. Mm -hmm. Education is so transformative, it's like a lightning rod, That's it changes right. everything, it changes people, and then especially as a woman you you reach out to oh, everybody right, around yeah. you because you are wired to be a giver mm. to be a lifter of people mm. so every girl everywhere in the world should get an education as a society as individuals as governmental bodies we must ensure the educational empowerment of girls because it's a win-win for everybody okay, let ma. every single girl in the world get quality education all right and that's we'll fantastic be better, we'll be better for it amen amen to that women need to have education girls need to have education and like you said we would be better for it so hopefully all girls around the world in nigeria like you've also said um we have more out of school girls so hopefully all these children girls boys everyone will be educated and our nation will be better we want to say thank you so much for coming it was a pleasure having you on our show today thank you ma Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Bye. Yes, have a nice day. All right, so we're speaking with Betsy Abba. She's a women and children's rights activist and the founder of Sea Hope Nigeria. And we've just been talking about the International Day of the Girl Child, a day set aside to just, you know, advocate for the girls. And hopefully things will be better for all girls and all women around the world. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for having the breakfast with me. My name is Rume Paulson. I'll see you again on Monday. Have an amazing weekend. Bye-bye for now.